Hi, thank you for welcoming me. I appreciate Thanks this. Thanks for coming. Let's have a look. Remember when teleportation replaced airplanes? The U.S. government immigration troops intercepted the growing number of the illegal migrants. Finally. This is an incredible exhibition. I've read a lot about it. Thank I've looked you. a lot about it. Yeah, I want to make more videos in the Caps, which is this fictional island. Yeah. So it's a project that like I'm working on as I'm showing this. In the middle of the teleportation process, in complete quantum mess, this assembly state, which we all know is insanely dangerous. So this is the introduction. It's a three-minute animation where this animated crocodile tells you about the island of the Caps and how it started. And when I was writing this, I was in Morocco and there was this bootleg Lacoste tracksuit every I saw everywhere. So yeah. I thought she could, like the brand could look a little bit like the Lacoste logo and I right. went, went with the crocodile as a character. So she does the classic thing that starts any sci-fi film. Which is, you know, the five minute in a intro. World. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what she does. Yeah, this except animated. it's a female narrator. The people that are in the video are my family members. Right. My mom is one of the main characters. Yeah. And I ask them to role play, but they're very much being themselves. The party on the caps itself, the party, which is the center scene of the film, takes place in my grandma's house, and there's my aunt and my mom. <laughs> like ask my mom to just be like an amplified version of herself and then from that I go back to editing with the knowledge of who my mother is and although she's role-playing it becomes a documentary about her as a Moroccan pharmacist yeah. uh, in Morocco yeah because there she's a pharmacist on this Caps Island when you're first starting this project like what kind of uh, mother and aunt do you have were they like oh well this is definitely going to change the world or they're like all right you know we'll play the game and see what happens like how do they feel at first what i have kind of knew but had confirmation of is how fun uh, my families are like they're not scared of performing of dress dressing up and like right. playing it's yeah. kind of it's kind of like the type of games you play as kids of role play right but you're asking your whole family to participate yeah and they're doing it because they're like worried about your art career kind of <laughs> <But> like <laughs> <laughs> I was interested in making this type of work with this type of characters because of growing up around them the way that they are present in the world and the way that also they are extra feminine in this way that has always has always been a mystery to me yeah I think has always like made me want to film them do you feel like you learned a lot Lot of new things about your family just by going through this experience the creating something with them there's an element that's extremely sweet in seeing how people are are open to uh, letting you film them right you know people that are very close to you but it's it's a different relationship to the everyday hang out with family yeah. okay so you work with very familiar characters mm -hmm. your family but you've also worked with uh, characters that are familiar to everyone like the fly <laughs> and I wanted you to talk a little bit about The Fly and why um, that became such a, like, uh, a, a big character for you. I had all this iPhone footage of Morocco and I wasn't sure what I was going to do it, with it. Yeah. It was the summer that Kiss It Better, Rihanna, okay. Rihanna's song was a hit. Yeah. And I thought I would use a hit because I like having like a marker in time. Mm -hmm. Do what you gotta do, keep me up all night. And I chose the fly because I was thinking about surveillance systems a little bit. Yeah. And she's more than an animal, she's a device. My friend helped me make her in a 3D program. Yeah. And what we chose for the material of her skin in the 3D program yeah. is similar to the one used for Samsung ads. Okay. You know, it was the time where all the smartphones had these like very fetishy 
um, like big shot of a phone, and like it's almost like the phone is sexy. Right. It's yeah. just the texture. Showing the sides, the contours, exactly. the curves. Yeah, yeah backlit. Uh -huh. so yeah. It's the same texture. Oh, so it's a sexy fly. She's yeah. a sexy device. <laughs> she's, a, she's, a, she's a smartphone a little same. bit. Yeah, I'm a sexy um, device as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Through the speculative and fictional aspect, mm -hmm. I'm actually doing something that is extremely about documentary filmmaking. Right. And although it is surrealist in a lot of like a lot of scenes have special effects. It's very much about reality and being transparent with the audience, yeah. you know, because documentary is a construct anyways. Right. But I'm kind of being like, okay, here I'm showing you how much I'm pushing the I'm documentary. I'm the author, I'm present, yeah. I'm here with I'm you I'm not trying to it. disappear with right. documentary filmmakers, which can be kind of violent. Right now, I film for a very short time right. and then I edit for a really long time and yeah. that's 80% of the process. I didn't even think of that, but the video work that you do is lonely work because, you know, you do mm -hmm like 1% image taking and then 99% image making alone. Yeah. Which is of course why, you know, we are not in your studio. We're here at this installation because yeah. your studio is mostly in your head. <laughs> you yeah, yeah, it's, so, it's a computer, yeah. yeah. Well, thank um, you so much for uh, welcoming me here. This is absolutely beautiful. Thank and, you, thank uh, you for coming. I'm gonna wander around in it a little bit.